What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Wild Willow. I am very excited about today because I'm going to be gifting you guys with some really cool information and hopefully it helps you guys better your business and grow or it inspires you. So for starters, we are going to discuss different types of materials that we can use for hat patches, but that's not it, okay? I'm also going to show you guys how to pull different shades uh, in some of the materials that we're using. So it's gonna be really cool. We're gonna go into some tri-layer stuff. So stay tuned to the end of the video because I am going to be giving some really cool, helpful tips and I'm gonna showcase some of the work that I've done that I'm very proud of and hopefully it inspires you. Let's start off with tri-layer acrylic Romark, whatever you wanna call it. You can get it from uh, Johnson Plastic Plus. I have a discount code. I'll leave it for you guys in the description. For example, I have this hat patch that I made for Mob Independence. It's a red, white, and blue uh, row mark. And then also right here, I have another tri-layer acrylic. It's also red, white, and blue, but it's a metallic red, white, and blue. Um, Hydebond Adhesive gifted me this sheet to run some tests and to showcase it for you guys. Uh, it is not available yet, but if you do want to get this material, go follow him on Instagram or Facebook and he'll leave updates on when this material will be ready. I absolutely love this Romark acrylic material. I have been having orders left and right with people wanting this, especially that red, white, and blue. Go on to Johnson Plastic Plus and use my discount code to get 15% off and start messing around with this material. It's totally worth it. However, you can also pull different shades and different colors using your leatherette. For example, right here we have our burgundy that engraves silver, and I was able to pull six different shades along with uh, the black that you see there, and then also on this one, the blue that engraves silver. Also was able to pull a few different, different shades and uh, black as well. These work great for add, adding different contrast to your patches. I was also able to pull another color out of my wood leatherette that engraves black. I was able to get white out of it as well. So these are my little test cards. I have a bunch of them. I will show you at the end of the video uh, one of my little tips about these cards. But in order to get these shades, you got to run your material tests, okay? If you don't know what material test grids are, you need to do your research, do your homework, and start running your material test. Uh, for example, right here, I have gold that engraves black, and I was able to pull a very light gold shade there, and also I was able to uh, pull a gray. As soon as I started noticing these different shades in this material, I was so excited to start putting them to use and adding different contrasts to my patches. Another example, uh, this is with Hyde Bond's metallic red, white, and blue. Um, this is with a blue top layer. I, ha I also have one that has a red top layer. But as you can see, it goes white, red, and then you have a bunch of different shades of like a light blue and then a light red. And that way, whenever you get somebody's design or their logo, and if they have different colors, this is a great way to break it up and add different shades into it. Another material to use that's probably one of the most popular ones out there is leather. And I that's kind of what started um, this journey of different shades is I used to use like different shades on multi layers for my leather to be able to pull some different colors. So I would say honestly, the best material if you want to start practicing this would be ordering some brushed metal Romark acrylic. Uh, you can get it on Johnson Plastic Plus. Um, also the leatherette that engraves silver pulls uh, different shades. And then some of the leatherettes like this wood one, um, you can also get a white and a black out of it. So definitely play around with it, have fun with it. Anytime you get some new material material in, run material test grid and get some different shades. Now I wanna take you guys into my shop. After we do that, I want you guys to please stay tuned to the end because I'm gonna show you guys some really cool patches that I've done and give you guys some really awesome, helpful tips. Um, and I just wanna to mention to you guys, so yes, I have my super fantastic, amazing CO2 Thunder Laser, but I have not forgotten about you diode users out there, okay? That's where this laser comes in handy. This is the Laser Tree K1 Max. 
It's a three in one laser. It's a 20 watt, a 40 watt, and a 60 watt, right? Freaking crazy. So when I first started laser engraving, I would have picked this up in a heartbeat over my D120 watt because it has the three in one. So you're getting your fine precision in your 20 watt, and then you get your 60 watt, and your cuts are cutting out like butter. So I definitely highly recommend you guys checking out this laser. I will be going into a video down the road, getting into all the details about this laser, how it works, uh, and reviewing it. Down below, I'll put a link for this laser and a discount code if you guys wanna go check it out. So now let's get into our material test grid, but we are gonna drop the settings down really low, low power so that we can pull our light shades. All right, so here are two material tests I did. The first one, I dropped the power down to five and brought it all the way up to 20. There's some really cool blues in there that I would use as a filler to, for some contrast. And I would honestly even use some of these blues in here also, just to give it some more dimension. And then test card two, I uh, pulled some more really cool blues uh, in the power range from like 20 to 25. Uh, but these are just really good ways to figure out what shades you can pull out of your material and what to use as good filler for your guys' uh, patches. All right, so our material test is done. Now I want to go over something that I'm really excited about. Um, I'm going to be dropping Wild Willow hats and they will be up for sale on my Shopify account. I'll link it down below. And if you guys purchase these hats, thank you so much. It means the world to me. It supports me, my family, my channel, uh, and I just really greatly appreciate it. Okay, now I want to show you guys a couple other patches that I've done in the past uh, that show the different shading effects. Uh, one of them being uh, this guy. He had a jersey for like a cornhole tournament, and he wanted me to make a custom hat to match his jersey. So, and he also wanted to support my business and he wanted me to make a wild willow hat. So I went ahead and did that. And this is it right here. It is a double layer uh, leatherette patch. And then on the top is the blue that engraves silver. And I was able to pull different shades of blue along with the black. Another one that I did is this like burgundy colored patch um, for a brewery. I was able to get the tooling in the back, uh, a very light shade, so it's subtle. And I know in the beginning, I was mentioning that the leatherettes that go silver, um, it's actually any leatherette that goes any metallic color that you're really able to pull those different shades out. Uh, for instance, like this one, this is a brown leatherette that engraves gold. And what I did is I did a light uh, engraving of the uh, paisley in the background. And then I did the full engraving of the letters so they're more, more bold. Another material that does really well um, with the multicolor and uh, shading effects is the brushed gold to black and brushed copper as well. Uh, as you can see right here, I was able to get like a gray and then a light gold finish in the W and in the Yor. Okay, lastly, I want to show you one more that I did that you, I was able to pull white and black out of the leatherette. It's a wood grain leatherette and I was able to get the white and the black. Um, and this one turned out really good and really clean. So there's so many different options. You gotta just get the material and start practicing and run your material tests because you never know what you're gonna find and it can totally change the game for you and how you design your patches. All right, we're almost done. I just wanna go over a few tips that I think you guys might like. Starting off with these bad boys. So right here, I have all of my material test cards, okay? These are freaking handy. I got the little rings off Amazon, but what I did on the card is I put my logo on there, I did the engraving, what the material is called, and then different settings that it can engrave. I have almost all of my materials on here. A really cool thing about these cards, for me, when I go into businesses, I bring some hats that I think that they would like, uh, sometimes I gift them a hat, but if I don't gift them a hat, uh, I use these cards to lay on the hats so that they can get an idea of what the material would look like on the hat. And this is a great visual for people. Sometimes when you tell them, like, try to explain the material you have, they don't get it. Okay. So this is just a really handy way to give your customers a visual. Let me know if you guys think this is a good idea because I think it's freaking genius. Okay. Okay, another very helpful tip if you're the type of person that goes into businesses to try to get business like me. Um, something that I did is 
over the years is I try to collect patches that I really like that I've done for different businesses and customers. And I put them in this card holder book. That way I can show customers some of like the really detailed stuff I've done, how some logos look. I mean, it, it's just a great way to stay organized and showcase what you can do. Okay, really quick, you guys, I came across a patch that I think is really cool that I've done. And I should have mentioned this earlier, but what I did, oh, what I did here is I did a Romar, a copper Romark inlay uh, with a leatherette outlay. <laughs> I don't know what it's called, but it's freaking cool. Um, but yeah, really cool effect, unique, different, and a lot of people see this. Okay, next helpful tip is whenever you are pressing your patches on your hats, um, some of you might already know this, but I use a hot plate with a silicone sheet over the top. Um, and that way I put all my patches on there, they're ready to go and they're nice and hot. I'm able to bend the row mark very easily. And also the adhesive gets tacky, so I don't have to preheat my hat. So it's been a game changer for me. It saves me a lot of time. You do have to play around with the settings a little bit because sometimes I warn you, if you leave your row mark on there for too long or it's too hot, it will start to curl up and then your patch is ruined, there's no saving it. Uh, so keep an eye on it uh, when you first start using that method. Uh, but once you dial it in, it's a game changer and you'll save so much time. All right, my last helpful little tip for you guys, if you start using this method and you're trying to get the light engravings on the row mark, make sure you wipe your patch clean at the end because I have run into a couple issues where I would wipe it clean and then like where that light engraving was, it didn't look the same anymore. Uh, and I had to run some different tests. So just be aware, make sure you wipe it clean, make sure it's still uh, looking the same way it was when you took it out of the laser. But if that happens, just run some more tests until you get the right outcome. All right, everybody, today, I felt like I did that pretty quick, honestly. Uh, I tried to keep this one a little bit shorter. I'm used to making longer videos. But I, this video means a lot to me. I'm really excited about these new techniques that I'm learning and I was really happy to share it with you guys. I really hope that you guys found today's video inspiring. Uh, I really hope you guys found this information useful. Uh, I really hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.